brother Hot Tim, I'd like to welcome you to the journey. I'd like to thank those that are taking the time to listen. Um, sorry for the lateness, I had to disable some things on my Google account in order to get this up because uh, as those of you who've been following know I've been having computer problems. Let me go and fade the music out because I don't know what's going on with the sound. But yo, we here, we live. I'm over here at uh, the, the Monte Cristo Cigar Bar using their Wi-Fi so that we can um, have this talk tonight. We're going to freestyle it, of course. Um, I got some people coming in right now and is about to jump off. So uh, i like to uh, welcome my, uh, of course, you know, my, my one of my co-hosts, one of the regulars on the show, Brother Quasi, just walked up in and 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 uh, he brought a friend with him we also have Sebek sitting in in the audience so lord knows where we're gonna take this conversation but wherever it's gonna go it's gonna go you know because i was thought i was gonna have to do a solo thing but i ain't got to do a solo thing no more but before we get all into this i want to send out some shots to oxy water the world's first oxygen enhanced mineral water you know give it a try is at a store near you Go and check them out because they support the community, and I'm with for I'm with anything that supports the community. I'm also sending shots out to um, Orange 82 for providing us with the track that we open the show and close the show with. So I want to send shots out to Orange 82. For those that's interested in more information about Orange 82, go to www.orange82.com. Also, feel free to stop in and uh, at the uh, OxyWater website at www.tryoxywater.com and don't forget to join the journey check me out at www.giamijourney.com once again that's www.giamijourney.com join the journey let's explore the universe together let's grow let's be bold let's look at some new things in some new ways um one oh let me and first and then also let me do this I'm going to send out some shots to Gumroad. You can check out some of my products on Gumroad. It's one of the few sites out there that allow an artist to produce his own shit and make a majority of the money like you deserve rather than paying them another motherfucker half your earnings like they wrote half your shit. So um, feel free feel free to check out Gumroad. Go to Gumroad.com, sign up, and, and, and push some of your stuff out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give Spreaker an opportunity because I, I, I encourage everybody that's listening, get your own Spreaker station, station, even if you don't do nothing, but uh, sit around and, and and join and listen to other people's shows. But you got uh, mass opportunities to join and to uh, listen to thousands of different shows. That's me. All right, so I'm going to give uh, Spreaker a moment here to talk about their stuff, and then we'll jump right into the show. Lord knows where we're going to go.
All right, we back. We back. This is Brother Hot Tim. I know you hear the stuff in the background. We got, uh, it's a kind of a live night up here, and it's jumping off. I got some guests. Uh, I introduced two of them. I got another brother sitting here, and I don't know his name. Hopefully, be to add to the uh, conversation. What's your name? Introduce yourself. All right, all right, Spreaker World. Here's a new new member of the uh, group. Here we go. Peace, 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 family. Uh, this is a rule. Report live. Uh, yeah, peace and blessings to you all. What up, though? Ready to get this conversation jumping. It's a lot to talk about, so I ain't going to take up no time. All right, first thing that's on my mind is I've been working with my kids, and um, one of the things that we've been talking about in uh, this last week, um, I'm building on unity. And uh, what I'm talking with the kids about is developing a self-image. I know you can't really necessarily put a tie between those two right away, but you know, Brother High Tim's mind, the way I work, all that shit is connected. So I'm trying to help them develop their self-image because a person can rise no higher than their self-image. And according to all the studies that I have, a chain, whether that chain is an organization, whether that chain is a tribe, whether that chain is a family, is only as strong as its weakest link. And if an individual has a weak self-image, has a weak self-image, he, he or she will not be able to rise will not be able to rise above their self-image you know what I'm saying so talking about unity several things came up one of the things that's been stopping my mind around unity is another thing that's kind of far out is freedom what the fuck is freedom I want to really get down into this conversation about freedom because on my way over here, I came up with a definition for freedom. It's free to be dumb. Freedom. Free plus dumb equals freedom. What is the difference, anybody that want to comment on it, what do you feel is the difference between freedom and free will? I mean, I don't know where you necessarily trying to take it. Whatever, this crazy. I don't know where you're going to necessarily take it, but I got my own thoughts. You know I done thought about it. Um... Free will to me is an illusion. I don't know, uh, you know, again, where, where where people might want to take it. But if you look at the word free, it means independent and uninfluenced by any other circumstance. Or it means free and independent. And then will, I guess we're basically describing our uh, center of decision making. Or, you know, that which make us drive, our drive to make decisions. Our drive to make decisions is always going to be influenced by something that has happened or our desire to make something happen. So free will in and of itself is like a waste of time concept. Like it's impossible, at least from my perspective. All right, according to the definition that you just debunked, you said free is, is being independent and not influenced by external circumstances. You said that's impossible. But my question is, then, far as Giami definition of self, how does that work together? So the self is something that's, that don't exist. For those that don't know, when we, in Giami, we talk about the self. The self is the absolute, complete, and, um, absolute, complete and perfect qualities of a being that are not influenced by external circumstances. So just what you said about free right there just debunks everything that we talk about in Giami about the self. So you saying freedom don't exist? Are you also saying that the self don't exist? I think those, as I was saying it, those words came. I, I don't know what drove me because I was conscious of saying those words as I was saying them, and I knew that it was a contradiction. Um, free and independent. I, I don't know. I guess I have to actually give that some more thought about how that kind of conflicts with the self, but. When, when we think of the self, we also think of something that's free and empty, so to speak. Uh, that's why it's kind of a contradiction to say myself. 
You know what I'm saying? Like to attach the word self to something else is a contradiction of the word self. Just like free, to attach free to will, like will is an actual something. So, so to attach free something that's independent, it can't be attached to anything. That's hot. All right, so I won't no longer say myself. So last week, Jay came in and checked me about the whole hip hop piece. And I had to, I mean, because this is what this show is about. It's about constant growth. So you say when you attach my to self, you kind of cancel out the whole self-concept there, too. But now this is why I'm saying freedom. I don't, I don't, I'm, 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 I'm struggling with the term freedom at this point in time. Because according to this society, or at least Western society that we exist in, freedom seems to be something that higher authorities give you you know what I'm saying we have the freedom of right we got the freedom of speech but the only reason we got that shit is because somebody higher than us supposedly is protecting it I'm saying free will is what we should be striving for because free will basically goes to that independent or interdependent person that you are or being that you are and 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 those the power of being free in your in your corner my problem now is when I'm working with the kids I'm trying to I'm, I'm, I'm working with the concept of freeing them or giving them the tools to free themselves from the 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 chains and locks of what society say you should be because when we look at all the successful people that I have run into in my studies every last one of them came to a term where they snatched their they snatched and became free not necessarily they didn't snatch their freedom they snatched they used their free they used they used their free and their will to mold themselves into something that was beyond what society told them to be we could go through Malcolm X we go through Frederick Douglass we go to uh, Thomas Alva Edison we go to uh, Booker T Washington George Washington Carver we could look at Martin Luther King we could look at Rosa Parks we could look at anybody that has made a mark on the world has taken something for themselves when I think of freedom it's something that's passive it's something that like I said people give you and 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 free for you to be free as my man said in the movie give me free that's something that can't be given to you fruit if that has never been given to an individual it has a person has to take that there is no emancipation you can't be emancipated into freedom you can't be given freedom. You have to snatch that shit. So in a sense, maybe I do agree with the concept of freedom. All right, so, all right. So you have to snatch that shit. That's where the word liberation comes from. Liberation is never given. Liberation is always taken. And I think that individuals need to start snatching their liberation. They need to start snatching and using their free will to become who the fuck they want to be rather than what the world telling them they should be. Any comments? Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, as you was talking about your students, um, I started classes at Ohio State a couple weeks ago. Uh, shout out to Sebek for, for, he got the headphones right now, he don't hear me, but... He really, you know, pushed me to go ahead and make sure I got into school and everything. But it's this one class I'm taking. It's like an agriculture class, and um, it's 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 a it's talk, talking about different majors within the agriculture department. And one major that they was talking about is uh, ag education, ag science education, and um, it's so progressive. Like it's a school you can open a school. I'm sorry, I forgot the uh, the little terse like. I can't remember some type of charter school you can open. I'm sure I. What is it? Is it a freedom school? Nah, it's it got something to do with it's like math sciences. It's, it's some I can't remember the little uh, acronym. STEM. STEM, yeah, STEM. Um, you can open a STEM school and you can kind of set a real unique uh, curriculum. Like you can pretty much design a curriculum and submit it. You know, for uh, you know interpretation or to be accepted or not. And um, it's some really progressive some really progressive um, curriculums being put out there that's really challenging young people to think in a whole different way and it's like the type of thing you said and it's like people are realizing it's a everything and one of the things about these schools is 
one of their goals is to challenge the standard of curriculum in school. So it's like the fabric of everything is being challenged right now. You know what I'm saying? So like that unity thing, it is so important because people are understanding it. You know, it's, under, it's, it's important for us to understand that right now. You want to say something, Haru? You just checking out the vibe? So Beck is all off in his own world, but uh, speaking of the schools, now, one of the things that um, my kindergartners, I'm going to blog on this, my kindergartners and my first graders taught me about freedom because when I'm in this class, when I'm in these classes, I'm not only facilitating, but I'm also learning because these, from these little babies, man, you get a lot of wisdom because they haven't been totally engulfed in, in some of the, well, some of the, well, many of them have, but anyway. They taught me freedom consists of fun and play. I mean, this is from the art because they can't write. Freedom consists of fun and play, a mission, and love. If you don't have those three things, unity will not exist. When I asked them to describe their self-image, when I asked them to describe their family, then I finally I asked them, I said, all right, cool. We're talking about freedom. Let's connect this to freedom. Let's, I mean, let, no, we're talking about unity. Let's connect this to unity. And I said, all right, I want you to draw your family doing something. Every last one of the pictures, every last one of them when we was talking about unity, even when they did it, the image of themselves was all about love, fun, and play, and a mission. And I think, you know, because that that being a, a community being a, a community organizer being a tribal organizer that shed some light on some of the issues that I've been having with organizations in the past because we become so engrossed in what we're doing we start knocking out the fun you, we really get to play then on top of that there's really no love because we all have come together and in coming together and not having fun, we lose sight of what the overall mission is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, these babies, man, they drop all types of shit on me, and it's crazy. So now we're going to take a commercial break, and we're going to come back. And since Quasi brought up the term, the thing about education, we're going to talk some about education. So we out of here for a second, and we shall return. Uh, we sitting up here talking about the feedback from um, the show. So we're going to curtail that a little bit. And um, we was talking about how the show gets a lot of hits, but um, I don't get a lot of feedback. Also, the same thing with the blog. Don't get a lot of feedback, but I, I, I don't necessarily do it for the feedback. I would love it. Because I want to see where I'm progressing, where I'm not, um, whether I'm stepping on some people's toes, which would be good, or whether people agree. I would love the feedback, but I do it because I love to do it. And um, I love to get the thoughts out there and get people. And, and really, I want to step on some toes because I want to see uh, how the audience is taking the information. You said, now you was talking about you blog. No, I actually said I don't blog. I haven't blogged. I'm not familiar with blogging. So they're like, this is all new to me. That's why I was asking you about it. All right. 
for those that don't know what blogging is, blogging is basically when you get on on the internet and basically do a log, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly. Um, you put your ideas down because the one thing about the internet that I really love is that the internet gives you the opportunity to share your ideas with the world um, put it out there and possibly get some feedback um, it connects people in ways that nothing else in the world has ever connected people although we don't get the close personal relationships you develop some um, other type of relationships that if you are wise you can use to your advantage as well as to help other people so um, I do what I do because I like I like teaching I like learning I like seeing new things so I get on the internet and the things that I'm really into I get into a little bit more deeper by writing about them because I had to do some research um, like today I was doing some research for for the kid for the younger kids because I, I work with I work with from kindergarten to um, first grade and one of the issues that I'm running with running into is keeping the curriculum rounded enough so that I could reach kindergartners but but take that same information and work with the adult the um, eighth graders because they're a little bit closer to adults and they can have different conversations and you see you can see the growth within the school but you can't do the same thing with kindergartners that you do with eighth graders because you'll lose them almost immediately because they I'm too old for that I'm too mature for that so the conversations I've been having with all the classes have been really enlightening for me um, as far as the kids some of the kids want me to keep going and I'm getting in trouble because my classes is running over you know um, so uh, and I blog about those experiences because it's important that we realize that our children are a fountain of wisdom because they have not been as totally in um, set in their mind state as adults so it gives me new material to constantly sit down and talk about and write about and I was doing some research because I got to do stories for younger kids and I was reading the story of Aladdin because I've been researching genie, the connection, like on one of my podcasts, I talked about the connections between genies, genies, demons, and our man. And I, I was, I, I wanted to read the, the original story of Aladdin's lamp. Now, the story that they're putting out for the kids is almost totally different from the story of what really happened in Aladdin's lamp. Now, when you watch the movie, you see Aladdin find his lamp and how he found the lamp and stuff like this, and he was an adventurous kid. But according to the story, Aladdin was basically a bum. He was so he was so unfocused that his father died from grief <laughs> trying to deal with this boy. That's how he ended up almost an orphan. And his mom played a big role in the story because she stayed alive. And then you find out that he got two genies. He had one that came from the lamp that had a lot of power. And he had another genie that was trapped in his ring. Now, for those that didn't check out my podcast, it's on my uh, mile three, which I do after I do a run and get high on on my endorphins that's flowing through my body and shit. But anyway, while I was running, it came to me that there's a connection between genies, demons, and the concept of our man. And this basically is this. When you look at the concept of a genie, a genie is basically a jinn in the Arabic tradition. And, and in Arabia, they had what they called desert spirits. And these jinn existed and basically, when you look at the word jinn, the word jinn with the G and the N or the J and the N, when you find when you look at Arabic languages, when they use those words, basically what the J and N means in it, it means hidden, covered up. The genie exists in a different plane, and we can't see him. 
And when you look at the Quran and the creation story, the Creator created three major things angels, jinn, and men. Now, the jinn, like for right now, in this, in this room, according to the Arabic tradition, according to the Quran, jinn are floating around in here right now, and we can't see them because they exist in this different plane of existence. They're hidden from our view. And I'm looking at that, and I made a connection years ago when I was working with some older kids about genies because I, I came across the concept of the genie. And I looked at how genies, the term genie came into Western tradition. Basically what happened was some Europeans found the Arabic stories of one, uh, one, A Thousand and One Nights. And they saw the genie story, and they loved the genie story. And when they came and they wanted to translate that story for English readers or for Latin readers, France, French, German, or whatever, the closest word that they could find was a Greek or Roman, it was Greek, Roman, one of them, that they had in there, which was genius. You know what genius is? Genius in the Western tradition is basically every man or woman that's born is born with a genius but it's also known as a demon this demon protects you and guides you in your life and you are known as a genius when that genie or that gen that that part of you takes over when you go into certain crafts like if you become a musician and you automatically take to the instrument and become very good at it that means that you are a genius because you're your inner demon, as they would say in Western tradition, has come out and blessed you in that area. This being is hidden too, and is also called a demon. Now, in Western tradition, a demon, they couldn't use the word demon for genie because it would turn people off because during that time, the Christians took over and the term for genius was banned basically because they connected the words demon, and they connected the word G, um, demon to evilness. So they had to use the word genius because most people didn't recognize that genius and a demon was the exact same damn thing. Now, so we got slightly Eastern tradition, genie or jinn. Western tra tra tradition, we got genius. Both of these are hidden beings. Now this is the connection to our man. When you go back into ancient comedic philosophy, Amen, you know what Amen means? What it mean? Amen means the hidden. Amen is the hidden part of reality that everything else, it's like the canvas that everything else is painted on. It's the hidden. So I'm making connections here. And this is the connection. Genie genius or demon I'm in the hidden qualities that's out here what are the hidden qualities within human beings the one thing that guide us that most of us don't pay any attention to is what people will label either the subconscious or the unconscious and when you turn stuff over to them it's like you make a wish and if you are persistent in your training of this thing or your and you listen to it it gives you spurts of inspiration. So I'm saying that the genie, the demon, or the genius, and our man was our subconscious or our unconscious way of explaining that hidden quality in human beings that make it possible for us to do the shit that we're doing. Now the thing that I bring to the young people when I look at these stories is, look at what your unconscious is able to do or your subconscious, your true self, without any orders from you, it makes it possible for you to translate the light in here so that we all can see the chairs, we all can see the lights that's going on. You hear the sounds coming out my mouth, but you don't have to worry about translating each symbol or each letter that I say. You unconsciously understand what the fuck I'm talking about. You don't have to think about that. You know what I'm saying? To smoke, you know that you need to inhale. And your body know how to extract 
everything out there smoke that you're breathing in along with the air so at the same time your body is doing some biochemical activities that are impossible for superpower computers to do today a computer has not been able to ingest air separate the oxygen separate all the other particles expel what it don't need keep what it does need and run the damn computer it can't do that but you do it all the time you don't have to think about your hair growing your nails growing none of that shit now the question that I have for everybody that's listening if your unconscious is able to do all that why should you be having a problem with calculus or reading a book in a day or being broke all the motherfucking time you see what I'm saying if your unconscious can run all these complicated functions why can't it run and guide your life now I'm gonna take a break on that shit because now we need to go into a commercial I'm sorry I ain't mean to run my mouth but hopefully y'all got something out of it you could go a little bit more in depth if you go to uh, on mile three and look at uh, genie demons and our man all right this has been brother hot Tim Check me out on um, www.giamijourney.com and we'll let Spreaker come in and do their thing.